Uh, boom. We are recording. And this time, I will not delete it. So, uh, it's great to uh, have Major T on this call because um, the you know hormones and the, the nervous system is a very complicated subject, and uh, I will do some Q and A and back and forth on. Uh, what uh, maybe maybe what your experience has been in teaching it and using it, but let's talk about uh, hormones. What are they, and what do they what do they mean? How do they work? So I'm gonna do a share screen here. <laughs> You see the uh, HPA axis? Okay. I am screening. Okay, I'm sharing. Good. All right. So, this, these three dots are explaining, uh, are used to explain probably one of the most complicated systems in the body. And uh, it looks absurdly simple here, and it looks nothing like it functions in real life because. The um, HPA axis controls, controls, well, not controls is a strong word too. So let's see if we can that. Um, hormones, let's define our terms. It's uh, hormones are regulatory substances Ooh. that stimulate specific cells into action. So it makes, it, it, they stimulate certain types of activities in cells. And the it, hormones are regulated by the HPA axis, which is the endocrine system in the anterior, pituitary, anterior pituitary, uh, pituitary gland and the adrenal cortex. Those are your endocrine portions of it. The hypothalamus, as I'm pointing, but you can't see me, it doesn't matter. Um, I'm, the hypothalamus is part of your brain that regulates all the things that are on autopilot in your nervous system. I promise that this is not gonna be a complex lengthy uh, uh, lecture on uh, scientific terms, but it's important to understand part of what controls your hormones is your brain. Part of what controls your hormones is the actual mechanical parts of the endocrine system that produce the hormones and they work together. And there's, there's, it, it shows on this diagram, there's a negative feedback mechanism to regulate hormones but we actually don't really fully uh, understand everything about how our body and our nervous system communicates with itself. So this slide I'm posting or I'm, I'm, I'm showing you is an illustrated kind of visual of, of how, the, uh, how your hormones are called into action. But what we've learned in the last few years, there's, a, there's, there's emerging uh, fields of study that discuss how the nervous system and your hormones and your uh, your, your brain your it, there is a two -way, it's a two-way street there's communication going up and down the chain and uh, the, the body is constantly communicating with itself both ways now we're gonna we're gonna get into specific hormones in a second but but, but essentially all all of the, uh, the, the I've, I've been in the fitness industry 20 years, uh, and all of the fad diets, drug, over-the-counter drugs, fake drugs, real drugs, are attempts to somehow manipulate this HPA axis into doing things it's not supposed to do or designed to do. So you... you uh, Whenever you think about like testosterone or steroids, you're talking about taking exogenous, meaning outside the body, hormones and injecting them into your body to create an effect uh, through those increasing hormones that you're, you're plugging in, whether it's testosterone, human growth hormone, or anything else. And what we're going to talk about today is why that doesn't work in the short term or the long term and what to do about it. So... Uh, a quick, uh, I, was, I was looking online for some good images uh, to talk about or to, to show you so you'd have things to look at. And there's so much misinformation out there. I'll pull up a slide which is both helpful and unhelpful here in a second. But uh, 
essentially, the, the, anytime you think about regulating a hormone or having like a hormonal change, you have, uh, th there, are, there are different types of deficiencies that people can go through. And most of them are moderate or mild deficiencies. Uh, I'm thinking of right now, for example, menopause. So like uh, when you go through menopause, you have a decreasing sex hormones that you're producing as a, as a female. And there are things like, um, you know, weight gain or loss, bone density loss, um, that happen when you when your sex hormones are, uh, are are falling, and the way that you uh, fight or resist or upregulate your sex hormones in that situation is the same way that you do it in every situation. Because the brain, the body, the nervous system, there's certain patterns of behavior and activities that create hormonal responses that create the effects. Um, that we often think about is being related. So for instance, you can inject testosterone into your body and that testosterone will build muscle and burn fat because that's what testosterone does. You can also increase your natural testosterone by standing up and doing a hundred squats. If you do a hundred squats, your measurable testosterone will increase by 400% in some cases, 300%. If you do it like, if you pick up heavy weights, and you're a larger person, you, de you do max effort deadlifts, they've registered you know, in short-term tests for testosterone, 1600% elevation in your, in your testosterone. So the behaviors create hormones, create hormonal responses that are regulated by this HPA axis in your nervous system. And whether you're talking about a, you're, you're, whether you're trying to burn fat through, through training, or through you know hormone therapy is in injecting or taking that uh, those drugs directly, you're always trying to game the system. And I'm here to tell you, and the reason why we're talking about this is there's no game, <laughs> there's no game that gets you to where you want to go with your health that is fast, that is immediate, or that has is transactional when it comes to hormones. Because you anytime you try to skip this part, anytime you try to skip to the end of your nervous system or regulating hormones by taking them directly um, or, or, or doing some sort of a therapy to create a, you know, a, a hormonal outcome, you're, you're creating a lot of adverse side effects along the way. Um, so for instance, let's look at like a, a fat burning uh, thyroid hor hormone like T3. So um, you can take over-the-counter, not over-the-counter, I mean, yeah, I guess there are over-the-counter. You, you can order hormones from pigs. You can take th thyroid and, um, and ingest it just like a normal vitamin. You can eat it, and it will increase your thyroid, your, uh, your T3 levels. What will happen is, unfortunately, it'll work really well. Your thyroid will go, your, your thyroid levels will go up. You will burn fat. You will have an extreme amount of energy because that's what thyroid uh, uh, thyroid hormones do. When they they force you to burn fat, you get a lot more uh, direct energy from it. Your heart rate elevates. Your metabolism elevates. Everything you know, you know, if you're uh, everything gets really, really fired up. What will happen is you won't be able to sleep. You'll have a hard time concentrating. Um, you're, when you're flicking the light switch directly like that, it has a lot of adverse side effects. I, I've no I've known friends that use. I've used thyroid hormone as a weight loss drug, and it's um, both amazing and terrifying because it's so effective. Uh, this was not an advertisement for over-the-counter thyroid thyroid drugs. This that is not my that is not what I'm telling you to take. Uh, let's go to another. I'm going to go to a, a slide here where it talks about um, that sort of illustrates what is happening with. Um, uh, different activities that modify hormones. Let's see here. Oops. Hi. Good to see everybody. I promise uh, we'll get to the fun stuff here very quickly. Ah, boom. Okay. So I like this slide more. Oh no, it's, it's really grainy. Probably grainy for all you guys too. Hmm. 
All right, I was trying to pull up a, uh, a list of um, activities. The, the point was, all right, I'm just gonna summarize that picture for you so I don't wanna blow out your eyeballs. The, um, it had a, has a list of triggers to burn fat and triggers to store fat. And um, there's all kinds of things that you do that change your hormone levels. So like if you fast, your, you, you get more human growth hormone um, in your body uh, and human growth hormone burns fat and it preserves uh, muscle tissue and it uh, helps repair and preserve your tendons, um, things like that. The, the issue, the, it's not that fasting is good or bad. The reason why your growth hormone um, increases when, you're, when you stop eating is because eating is what downregulates growth hormone. So anytime you're not eating, your growth hormone is, is elevated. You're upregulating your, your human growth hormone. When you're sleeping, that's the most time you spend not eating. That's where the majority of your physical repair comes into play because you're not eating, but you have all this energy to use and your body uses that, upregulates the healing hormones and repairs joints, repairs tendons, it repairs um, heck your brain, but your muscles as well. It helps you build more muscle. Testosterone um, is, is produced as well. So um, these behaviors that we, when we think of how to burn fat and build muscle, they're, uh, they're behaviors that signal different kinds of hormones to, to upregulate. For instance, and, uh, there's a common one I, I saw out there when I was going through the internet, eating meat eating uh, large amounts of protein up regulates insulin. And it was in, in, uh, in this particular, that particular image said, don't do these behaviors. Like don't eat too much protein. It'll raise your insulin levels and store fat. Well, insulin is what signals muscles to grow as well. That, like, insulin is the storage hormone. It's store, you, you know, you're, when you have the uh, insulin in your blood, you're putting fat in fat cells. You're putting uh, amino acids into muscles. You are recovering your building. It's a you know insulin. Insulin is a a master hormone that does a bunch that regulates a bunch of different processes. But if you but you want to eat protein, especially when you eat a, 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 a significant serving of it, so that your your protein synthesis is stimulated. Insulin is not the problem. Insulin a lack of insulin sensitivity is is a problem. And to go back to the HPA axis. And, um, and things that we do, movement increases insulin sensitivity, meaning you don't need to produce as much insulin to, um, to, 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 to store fat and to also build muscle. The more insulin sensitive your muscles are, the more energy that they absorb, the, the more glycogen that they absorb, the less fat that you store, the stronger and the leaner that you are. Movement increases insulin sensitivity, which is why moving all of the time like if you look at all of the uh, most fit people that you know at whatever age they're, they're daily movers the more you move the more insulin sensitivity or sensitive you become and uh the more hormonally balanced you are the less fat you store but insulin isn't a good or bad hormone in fact one of the things that i wanted to talk about today was that there are no good or bad hormones there's only stress hormones and recovery hormones. That's an oversimplification too, but I'm, 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 I'm doing that to, to paint a picture. All hormones have a purpose. Um, I'm gonna get into the questions here in a minute, but I wanna continue down this road on all hormones have a purpose. So you, you might have heard that uh, different types of training are better for you or worse for you. Like long, slow distance cardio is bad. It's bad for fat loss. It's it's very stressful. It's uh, you, you release a lot of cortisol. It's, uh, it, it can be harmful to your health. And strength training is good. Uh, strength training is good for fat loss, and um, it, there's a lot of beneficial hormones like testosterone and insulin-like growth factor. Truth is, is that, that that's true. Strength lifting heavy weights does produce more of certain types of hormones, but the uh, the all training, all training is stressful. And it is the super compensation or the recovery process, the, comp the, the compensatory response from the body that rebounds from that stress. Um, and it rebounds further than the stress pushed you so that you recover more and you come back stronger than you were before the stimulus 
before the stressful event, which is the training. So um, long, slow distance you know, cardio isn't bad. It's, eight, it's one kind of stress on your body. High intensity interval training, where your heart rate comes up and down, creates a different kind of hormonal uh, response than long, slow distance cardio or strength training. And they're all different from one another and they all have their benefits, which is why at TFW, we do everything. We do steady state cardio, we do intervals, we do strength training. Uh, we sometimes will combine those things, um, but there's no good or bad. We wanna get everything. Uh, we wanna get as many benefits as we can from as many types of um, activities. And uh, yes, I think that's all I wanted to say about um, about training specifically. But now let's talk about how to game your hormones. Gaming your hormones without using drugs or or medication or uh, or or supplements or or things like that. And again, I'm not a, not anti supplement as long as you understand why why you're taking what you're taking. It can be helpful, but. Uh, I released an article and I'll post this article to the Facebook page, um, which is all about recovery. And um, these recovery habits have um, stress mitigating, um, hormonally beneficial uh, results or properties. So things like meditation, deep breathing, uh, going for walks, um, reading a book, uh, sleep, obviously, um, you know, stretching, mobility work, those all have very hormonal, uh, a lot of hormonal benefits, which is why the nervous system likes them so much, which is why they help us recover. Also, things like, so you're trying to burn fat. Let's specifically talk about that because that's a, it's important, it's an important topic. Lifting heavy weights, um, fasting, sleep, eating adequate protein, greens. So having a lot of vegetables, specifically dark leafy greens. Um, cruciferous vegetables like on the warrior 20 all of these things are um, they help reduce insulin sensitivity or increase insulin sensitivity so that you can um, burn more fat build more muscle more easily because of the the, the veggies that you're eating um, they, and also by eating those types of vegetables the the plant material literally in order to digest it and process it pulls pulls fat molecules out of your blood, out of your, uh, uh, out of your, out of your body so that it can further digest and process that plant material. So it literally lowers your cholesterol, lowers your, uh, you know, leans you out while you eat it, uh, because of the nature of those foods in general. Um, so drinking caffeine, which is creates an adrenaline response, which is another hormone. Another thing that, um, the, uh, that caffeine and adrenaline do is they help you preferentially store carbohydrates in your muscles. One of the reasons why caffeine is such a performance enhancing drug and there are limits to how much caffeine you can have um, in your blood like at the Olympics. Like you can drink, obviously you can be caffeinated, but you can't have exaggerated doses of caffeine because it, it does change the way that your body works. But uh, Caffeine helps you preferentially store uh, carbohydrates in your muscles as glycogen. So the, the more caffeine you drink before a workout, the day before help you, will help you store up energy in your muscles. It will help you recover faster. And once, you've, once you've trained, adrenaline has a lot of neuro, uh, uh, neurological properties that I don't fully understand, so I will not talk about them. But uh, people use green tea and caffeine all the time as um, tools to prepare for training and to recover from training uh, because of the, the positive effects of caffeine on your body. The caveat to any of these and all of these is it always depends on you. So there are people that are very caffeine sensitive. Like if you have one cup of coffee or not even a cup of coffee, that's coffee's very strong. But if you have like a cup of tea, a, a green tea, which is, or a black tea, which is a much more mild dose of coffee, uh, caffeine, and then you can't sleep for an entire day, I mean, you might be one of those caffeine sensitive people. Your liver doesn't detox uh, or uh, tackle and break apart the, those caffeine molecules. Your, uh, your receptors stay open for too long. 
Uh, so there's sensitivity there. Same thing with actually all hormones. So different body types respond differently to training. Um, uh, some people, if they lift weights once or twice a week, they have a, a tremendous, they're tremendously successful. Some people have to lift weights every other day to get the same benefit. Uh, same with cardio. Uh, you know, there's, there's kind of minimum standards. Hearts are very, uh, very similar and very strong. They, they respond really, really well to almost all training. The heart is very responsive. But there are people that 20 minutes twice a week and that's all they need for uh, cardiovascular fitness. There's people that that's too intense and they need to do long, slow distance cardio training for longer periods of time, maybe 30 or 40 minutes at a time, a couple times a week, or maybe going for a 30 minute walk every day might be the thing that they need. Different body types respond differently to training and differently to food, which is why one of the things that we talk about a lot of training for warriors is, is doing a food journal to audit how you're responding to the training and the, and, and, and your, and the food that you're eating against data that you have. So maybe you're measuring yourself on a scale or the in body where you can see what it's doing to you and you're, and you're keeping track that way. So um, I covered hormones and what they are. What, what do they do? Why do they matter? And they do a lot of different things. They, um, how to game the system. So the behaviors that upregulate uh, recovery hormones, and sex hormones, which are called the quote unquote good ones, you know, like testosterone, um, estrogen, uh, human growth hormone, insulin like growth factor, which is training, sleep, lean foods, lean protein, vegetables, you know, obviously some carbs are good too, but, um, and then things like caffeine and, and other ways to, uh, that are, or other drugs that are safe to use to, to change your hormones, you know, in a good way to, to help benefit you as long as you don't have any adverse side effects. Um, I want to end this part of the discussion with um, uh, genetic factors in terms of disease and what, the, what those things mean. There are different statistics depending on how you're measuring and what you're calling a disease. It's around 4% of the population has some sort of a hormonal imbalance. Um, that was the, the last time I checked, which was like in 2010. Uh, but it is a relatively small percentage, but obviously that's millions of people over large numbers. But around 4% people have a, a, an endogenous, means uh, you know, an organic uh, hormone imbalance, or has some sort of a need for taking hormones. If you have to take hormones, then you'll already, you already know. I had a, a client and a friend if they, he had to take a uh, thyroid hormone and as soon as he stopped taking it, his hair would fall out and his nails would fall out. So it is when you have a true, like when your thyroid doesn't function or you've had your thyroid removed or something's around, you will know, you will know it is existing is very difficult without very balanced hormones. So most of the time, what we're really talking about is when you have a hormonal imbalance or your cortisol is too high or too low or whatever it is. Often what, we, what you're really talking about is you're talking about a, slightly, a slight deficit or a behavior that creates a slight deficit for a long period of time that accumulates into a very shitty situation. Meaning you might feel really exhausted and tired all the time because you are. And if you will be, be getting consistently bad sleep, if you've not been eating well, and if you've not been training consistently and exercising, even mild and gentle exercise, the negative effects of that, they accumulate over time. And so oftentimes when I'm working with people, I see that they might be on some sort of a, a drug for their hormone, might be on some sort of a protocol or, or a regimen, but it's not addressing the behaviors that create the, that create the uh, the imbalances. So when they when they get off the drug, they still feel shitty. So you can use you can use drugs, you can use supplements, you can use anything that your doctor recommends. I don't have any problem with that. But also address your behaviors and lifestyle so that you don't need to be dependent on a drug. If you don't need to be, if you, obviously, if you're one of those people, you already know who you are, then. Keep taking your drugs 
But uh, if you're having a deficit, you have to integrate lifestyle modification with your treatment plan so that you're not gonna become dependent on this uh, activity, this doctor or this drug for the rest of your life. <sighs> Man, hormones are complicated. There's a lot to them. It was very hard for me to like, bring, you know, digest and cut down to like just what I wanted to talk about today because there's so much really cool information about uh, hormones and, 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 uh, and how they work. I'm happy to talk more. I want to hear your questions about hormones and what to do. Um, so, ah, okay. Take a thyroid replacement, like to not take it anymore. Um, Mary, how long, how long have you been on a, yeah, totally. Um, so thank you discussion because there's so much information. How long have you been on um, a thyroid replacement? Oh, okay, 20 years. Okay. That's a long time. Um, and what was when you what were the symptoms that, that kicked off the um, the symptoms that kicked off the prescription? In active diet. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Is ah, okay. Um, awesome. I've got a couple of things. Oh, okay. These are two different people. Okay. Um, okay. Gotcha. All right. So a um, couple of questions. So Mary uh, is talking about her very specific symptoms and okay, cool. Um, yours, your, your, your case is more complicated. So I'm going to get to that second. I'm going to answer the easy one first. So lifting weights to produce testosterone, isn't that the last thing isn't, isn't the last thing uh, that you want in middle age, the women want in middle age? No. So Sarah, um, the reason why you want to lift weights and get testosterone is uh, <clears throat> when I say you, you're 1600% improvement in t or increase in testosterone, that's only for an hour. You know, that's only for a day. It's not, you don't just become, you know, a, a new hormone, you know, you just become Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? Like, <laughs> um, so it is, there's a, um, a refractory period where your HPA axis gets back to normal. And in that refractory period, you get all the benefits of the hormones that you produce. And the refractory period changes depending on you, the person and um, uh, uh, your lifestyle, things like that. So if you do a high intensity interval training workout, your body will still be in recovery 72 hours after that workout. So your, your, your cardiovascular system is still rebuilding uh, 72 hours later. Now, your testosterone is not like through the roof that entire time. You get a benefit, like I said, for a few hours. By the time you go to sleep that night, it's over. So you're getting a dose of hormones. You're not getting, it isn't hormone therapy. You're not getting elevated levels for a period of time to produce a change in your physiology. The, you're, you're stimulating a recovery response that goes on for a few days. So um, no, just yeah, testosterone, testosterone doesn't stay elevated. Uh, that's a great, that's a great question, Sarah. Um, and the reason why women want that is because they naturally produce less. So by getting a, a heavy dose, they're getting a dose of fat burning hormones, muscle building hormones that they don't have as much of in general. Um, and it's very difficult to generalize with hormones. In general, if you relax and if you eat a lot of um, saturated fat and protein in general a man's testosterone will raise just naturally they'll just produce more muscle they'll burn more fat in that state but men's hormonal uh, properties are much different than women's but even men among men there's vast di differences so um, but it's just you know lifting weights is has so many positive effects not just for women but for, for, for all of us so we all want we all want the juice um, Okay, keep asking questions if you have them, but I want to talk, talk about Mary since you're sharing this stuff with us. So um, 
in your early 20s, you were experiencing uh, signs of uh, inactive thyroid, hot flashes, weight gain, extreme fatigue, like I was talking about, that sense of just exhaustion. Okay. Um, a couple of, th I have, I have, I have, I have some more questions. Sleep. How is your sleep affected then? Is it affected now? Were you, were you having a hard time sleeping then? Oh, you slept all the time then. Okay, okay, you're tired. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, okay. Um, and then um, I would be, I'd be curious about um, your diet then, but it, it almost doesn't matter now because you're a different person now, dealing with different things now. So um, your, your diet, you've sent me your food log and uh, uh, I know now, kind of now that you've got some trouble sleeping um, and, and, and how you're eating, the things that I said today are very great places to start to balance your hormones naturally. I do need more protein. Yes, we all need more protein. Um, but uh, so starting, yes, I am so full. That's part of it. Like um, having a new sense of what satiation means when you're actually getting all the nutrients your body needs. Um, even I, when I eat my two palms of protein and I love me some food, but it's, it's filling, it is really filling. And, uh, uh, it's my hunger doesn't return for a couple of hours. Whereas if I could eat a bag of chips, which is like, you know, a thousand calories and I would be, you know, uh, I could probably eat three of those. <laughs> Just ate cottage cheese. Okay, good. Um, so protein greens. Um, they do a lot that just get, just getting that done for your uh, hormones, lifting weights on a regular basis. Uh, I would say daily exercise, especially if you're having a hard time sleeping, creating a baseline habit of exercise and uh, things like waking up early, getting exposed to the sun, things like that. So what you want to do, Mary, is you want to normalize all the other inputs to your hormones. So you want to normalize your sleep, you want to normalize your exercise, you want to create a baseline of food that's extremely stable and static so that you have fewer variables to, to contend with. And then when you've got your food and your hydration, your sleep, your exercise, um, then you start to look at uh, maybe, maybe uh, supplements or minerals. But I would, I would practice that um, baseline. And, I, and, and because we have, you and I have spoken, I know that you've got uh, adjustments to make on uh, diet first. So I wouldn't mess with a bunch of things until I, I mess with that. Um, good. Thanks for joining us, Deanne. We are we are uh, in the Q and A section about hormones. Deanne says it's easier for men. That is sexist <laughs> and partially true. Uh, Major T, uh, how did you feel about me covering the HBA axis? You think that was uh, adequate? Yeah, I thought it. I thought it was really good. A, a good like visual way to explain it. It it is very complicated. So, yeah. The the trippy part about uh, the nervous system and uh, the and, and hormones is that like I'm 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 taking a course right now that has current literature that is like being discovered. Like we're still figuring it out. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, like you know, someone will say doctors doctors are famous for this. Um, Oh, you know, you're tired because you got you got low cortisol. Well, that's one of hundreds of hormones that might be off balance, right? And so mm -hmm. you, you can, if you're depressed, if you're just depressed, all your hormones are going to be off. All of them are going to be off. I'll be like, hey, Josh, uh, you got you got low low testosterone. You're not feeling so hot. Yeah, yeah, I feel like shit. Thank you for pointing that out. Um, but uh, uh, we're, the, the communication is a two-way street in when it comes to your body mm -hmm. and the nervous system and hormones. So it's not just A plus B equals C, right? Sometimes the math reverses. Mm -hmm. If you're, if think about this. If you want to give yourself an adrenaline dump, breathe <sighs> shallow for <sighs> like just breathe real shallow into your chest for about 60 seconds and you're going to 
you're going to get that fight or flight response. You can give it to yourself. You can throw yourself into a panic attack just by doing that. Now, do I have an anxiety disorder? No, I'm not breathing too well. Now, maybe I do need to focus on other things and enjoy my life too, but everything works in a holistic system um, in your body and gone are the days of, uh, of thinking that there's one drug or one concoction that you can take uh, to, 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 to normalize or stabilize or get it within normal limits. I'm not a doctor, so I don't know what any of that shit means anyway. But, uh, um, but what I do know is I've seen people on drugs and in these therapy programs, uh, therapeutic uh, programs for years without tremendous results. So, uh, you know, the only people, the people that are the best at hormone manipulation are bodybuilders. They get together and they journal about like, okay, 200 cc's of testosterone makes me feel like this. And they just sit there and trial and error on themselves until they uh, are 6% body fat or 4% body fat or whatever. I mean, they're clearly insane, but also they're the ones that kind of know how this shit works better than anybody else because they're the only ones that get really good results. Uh, and rant, that was sort of a, just a tangential. But does anybody else have any other questions? No, just hanging out. Guys, it's beautiful. Don't forget to get some sun, man. I'm going to go for a walk right after this and get me some vitamin D. They say it's good for your immune system. You're going to need that because there's no chance that there, that uh, we're going to get a vaccine anytime soon. <laughs> hey, um, so what would you suggest if you want more estrogen naturally? If you want more or, estrogen? If you want more, right? No, if we're depleting and we're not our body's not making more? Take uh, Oh, like, so you're menopause and you're not producing uh, as much? Yeah. Yeah, Maybe, yeah. we'll find out next week. <laughs> so everybody knows in TFW. <laughs> Thanks, uh, thank you, Stila, for that. Uh, so, so, so yeah, um, the things that help you upregulate estrogen are the same things that help you upregulate the other sexual modes. So, uh -huh. um, meditation, um, lifting weights, eating a really clean diet, um, all of those things produce more testosterone. They also increase your estrogen. And um, I'm not as familiar with estrogen because I don't, uh, it's not something that uh, I've studied, you know, uh, deeply, but I know that estrogen and there's a there's a a, a, a suite of hormones that changes uh, when your ovaries stop producing eggs, and, and in that time you have a whole like kind of a profile change in your hormones. And but the sleep, the the, the lifting, the exercise, the meditation, the, the nutrition, all that stuff builds, so you can slowly upregulate your estrogen, and the things that you do will will uh, compensate for the ex what the estrogen is not doing. For instance, you will not build dense bones like as you're not producing uh, eggs anymore. Uh, uh, you're, you're not going to, the estrogen will not add uh, mineral density to your bones. But lifting weights will put stress through the bones and then a good diet will give you the resources and then the stress and the resources, the body will start to create more dense, more, more durable bones because, uh, because of the activities. Again, what you're doing in real life stimulates the change. So um, you, it's not that you need estrogen to be at a certain level to be happy or healthy. You continue to do the behaviors that create the changes that you want and you, you lean on them. So just like in weightlifting, you don't, you don't start by putting a 500 pounds on a bar and then putting it on your back and then trying to learn how to squat by doing that, right? So it's like, when it comes to your, you know, your hormone changes, you will not work out one time and it's fixed and you're, you know, you're, you're aging, you're like, you don't, you don't take a large dose of estrogen or, or whatever and you're done. What you do is you lean, you gently lean, you just increase your activity level a little bit. You, you eat a little bit more protein, you monitor your calories, you go to bed on time. And then that slowly moves the needle on the baseline. Uh, you know, a, they call it a hypothalamus. There's a, a set point, a regulatory set point, and you slowly push it up as you in, because when you start to exercise regularly, your capacity for exercise increases. It means you can have more intense exercise, get a better hormonal response, 
And so you're regulating it up slowly over time. You're leaning on it. Um, and so when you think about changing hormones, you think about changes in the long term, never the short term. Because again, you take some over-the-counter pig hormones, your thyroid's back, but you also might have a stroke because your heart's going to race through the roof and you're gonna, a lot of things are going to happen. So long, slow changes and, uh, is how you would tackle estro estrogen, but that's how you would tackle everything else as well. Great question, Steve. Great question, team. Yeah, this is, this is a fun talk, right? This is deep stuff, man. Um, I'll post some articles, some cool articles in the, uh, in, the, in the group. Maybe I'll email them out, but I think everybody here is on Facebook. I'll post them to the group so you guys can see and kind of pit, poke through some infographics. Um, but it's, it's, uh, it's really fun. But the, at the end of the day, just remember, um, there are no shortcuts and give yourself time because it takes a long time for your hormones to go out of whack. Obviously, if you get bitten by a radioactive spider, maybe, you know, your hormones go out of whack very quickly, but you know, changes in our body, they're a long time coming. So they have to be a long time going. So, uh, it doesn't need to be forever, but it means like a drop in the bucket every day, not one heroic effort, not one week of working out, not, I, I slept for nine hours, three days, nine hours each night for three days in a row. Do that for six months and see how it changes. You do that for the long, long time. Let your body become the change. And I promise you, you'll feel better. You'll look better and you'll bring forth the warrior within. <laughs> Mary's little dog looks so um, into the whole conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. That's my Google. Oh, this is like, oh, oh my gosh, really gosh, like so into Josh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all have a good day. All right. Have fun, you guys. Thank you so much. You're welcome.